can say these are the characters which are enclosed in you can say as a single quotes sorry let me zoom in a double quotes or it can be a single quote or for a dog string if you want we can read it <coughs> triple quotes okay so these are basically strings now they have a very uh, broad category of uh, functions of the strings if, if you go with that right so <coughs> we'll see all the functions of a string so basically we'll be going with the directory of the str you know like the types what we go with the things right so it starts with the capitalize then going with the case folds count and code advance expand tabs find format and it goes to the <coughs> z fill right okay okay so let's start with the things right so the very first if i go with that that is your capitalize So capitalize is something which converts, okay, which converts the characters of your first letter <coughs> in the capitalization, or you can say in the first one would be in the uppercase. So if it is a sentence, then only the first words, first letter would be capital. That's it. Okay. So let's say if I am making a string like uh, India, okay, and if I say this to be capitalized. So by default, what India does look like? If I write like I N D I A and giving a comma. So by default, you see <coughs> it is like this, right? And if I do capitalize, only the first letter is being capitalized. And if it is a sentence kind of thing, right? So if you write in this country, okay, here it is a right. India as a country. So only the first letter what I am saying is of the first sentence, first word, first letter will be capitalized. That's it. So that is how it goes. Okay. Now, so second we can see up there is so there will be a confusion basically, right? When we will be learning the case folds, sorry, not the case folds, the upper cases, the title, the capitalized, there would be some kind of confusions we will be looking on. But that is a different thing. Let's go ahead. Um, swing. Uh, okay, what is the next one? Like you can see here. Case fold center count and code and codes and expand tabs. Okay, fine. So if we talk about case fold, so before going to case fold, I'll let you know that in the loops and the conditional statements when we gone through the comparisons and all there sometimes we need to go with the lowers and when you are comparing some strings and when you are comparing some inputs we have taken so you need to compare it with either lower or you can take on the upper right so but the difference between the lower cases case full does nothing but it converts your string into the lower case that's it okay but there are different definition exactly so case fold and lower performs the same operations same operations in the sense you can say the output what you will see will be the same okay but they both have a different meaning right lower gives you the copy of your string in the lower cases and case fold what it does it basically compares it is used to compare some strings compare some of the <coughs> sorry compare some of the uh, inputs you have taken or variables you are having you want to compare it right so for comparisons we use case for okay so if we write again the same things <coughs> let's say if it is india then i write case fold so it turns like this okay so what if i write it like this so again it <coughs> converts in the lower cases right and there is the same thing with the lower right so there also in the right India dot lower <coughs> this is the same thing all right now 
if it's the definitions of both of them so you'd say we want to see the definitions right so from str you want to see the case code you are just writing the case code that's it and we'll be getting uh oh sorry it should be help so it returns a version of a string suitable for cases comparisons right and we will really go for the lower it gives you the copy of a string converted to the lower cases right so they will both have a different definition but the working what you will be looking on would be the same right so does that makes a confusion better okay so it should be clear all right next now we are discussing the important one which could be coming in your examinations too right and be useful for your courses and <coughs> further of your projects too <coughs> sorry okay so uh, next we'll go with the title now in the capitalize you have seen that the first letter of the first word right of a complete sentence get capitalized or gets in the upper cases now in the title what happens every first sorry every first letter of the words corresponding words right one by one one by one and all the words you can see on so every first letter of each of the words would be capitalized so if i write india is my country and if i use title so every first letter of each of the word would be capitalized that's the thing okay now there is a slight difference between this title and capitalize so capitalize was converting your only first <coughs> word sorry and the title is converting the complete sentence you can say here, right and next we have the upper case after this Now it could be used like so most of the times you would be looking so this basically converts the whole things in the upper right so most of the time uh, uh, when you take inputs like of your email IDs or something as a username anything right so what do you do say like if I'm taking some username as an input so I would be taking as input and rest I would be taking as enter username like this something okay and then I would be basically taking in the lower cases sometimes most of the time sorry right and if I need to compare it with something then obviously I'm going to go with the case code right so if I take lower that would be helpful for me for comparing things and then for proceeding so it will be all things right so if I take and um, I print the user, if I say like I'm um, entering my name, right? So enter gives me something different, right? so a lower <coughs> copy of the strings. Okay, that's it. Now let's say if I want to say print, so I'm going to go with the another function that is your swap case. So what swap case does basically it converts your upper into lower and vice versa, like lower into upper cases. Okay. So if it is uh, like this of a word, um, I need to swap the cases. Swapping will be right. Would have got the assignment to the swap case. And run it will be giving the lowers in the upper and the upper in the lowers. Very easy. That's about all about the swap case. Uh, next, we have the format. Now, this is also important. <coughs> so, uh, let me give you a definition of this. Now, see, it returns your formatted versions of these strings using substitutions from the arguments and the quarks is identified by the braces as you can see on the right okay so these braces are basically the formatting methods for using the format options or format functions of the string 
say with the same thing i want to print like uh, let's say a country is there or a country name is there okay so i say to be as india i just want to print then printing so i'm running the braces as my country there and in the braces i want to give some of the values so in the braces whatever the value <coughs> sorry whatever the values you want will be writing in the format like in the very easiest way if i say if you are printing something in a string these are in the string methods right if i say this <coughs> plus this equals this now all these so you need not to write format for three times inside one format what you will say like one plus one gives two so it will be printed one plus one is equals to two that is a different thing right okay moving on i hope till here things are clear to you uh, let me go backwards Now, indexing and slicing, you have gone through, right? How it goes, how these are made. So, if I go with the indexing methods, right? If I make it like there is a word called cryptography, I want to find how many y are there, how many p are there. And this is a word, and that will be giving us just x is equal to something. Now, how many <coughs> y are there? So, could I do the x dot count of this y to now? How many? Sorry, what are the index numbers of those y? So again, to Now, what is the difference between these count and these index? So, count is basically, guys, these the C R Y, the first one, <coughs> and the last one, right? Those are the two different Y's. And if we talk about the index, index is giving you the first index value of the first occurrence of your <coughs> variable or the string you are searching for. Like x is equal to cryptography. So y comes in the place of two. Let us starts from zero, c, and then r is going to be one, and then y is two. So your index also comes as two, and the count also comes as two. That is clear, I hope, right? So the last y value you are not going to get, right? The last index value you are not. So only the first occurrence values you will be getting. It. If you print even like if you apply the for loop for i in <coughs> x. Print your i, then get cryptography, right? And then if you print, so you see <coughs> the things in the p, like in the p, when you see the three, and here to the three, in the y, see two, and the two. <coughs> So these things are different, <coughs> right? Oh, things are clear to here. No. Now in the inputs, guys, if even if you're not taking in the end, in the um, floats, in the complex, right? If uh, let's say if you're taking some numbers, like if I say some even numbers, so let be even numbers. And I take just an input. So it could be, <coughs> sorry, 
uh, okay just a minute print ev uh, let's say i entered 4 i entered 4 right now this is a string right but still i want to check whether this is a number or not right this is numeric or not so there is a function for this is numeric for that so ev is numeric and that's true it is number so if you have entered something alphabets so only if numbers come then you are going to forward it right now if something in alphabets come there <coughs> so if alphabets come over there what are you going to do that right so you need to check it again so ev dot is alpha no now in the oops, sorry in the same thing but you here and in the ev i take some od for Okay. I run this. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Five hundred three and ODD. Again, EV value we are getting right because we printed that. So this is an odd plus the strings. So if you check it right now, that is, is this a number or not? Sorry. It will come false. Now that is going to be the alphabets, right? So it is not even the alphabets or not even the <coughs> numeric cases. So where to go with this? Combination of this, right? Combinations of the alphabets and then numericals we will say it's alphanumeric how the passwords we make special characters even alphanumeric we say to be. so uh, should we have to see this hmm, correct this is alpha numeric clear these would be very important when you are going to your projects right bank projects atm projects Sometimes you make some of the virtual assistants in the last batch, uh, some student made virtual assistants, right? So when you are going through those things, these are very important at that time. I'll show you some of the sample projects when you will, when we'll be starting up the things. At the time, I'll show you. <coughs> okay, uh, lower numeric printable space, title upper, and you can check it right, like upper, it is upper or lower cases. And for the things accordingly like if something in the lower case uh, 3 odd right so like if i say just the dog dog is lower case or not these are simple things you can go through right ipmb files would be there for you to go through you know? so these are the things in these strings now uh, let's say in the dog if i want to replace something it's a string right so replace uh, replace methods are there for that Like EOG or three please, <clears throat> and the first occurrence you have to write of what you need to replace, and then you need to write with which you are replacing it. <clears throat> okay. Like I need to replace this. <clears throat> oh. And replacing by capital O. That's it. Or the IG deck. So whatever. Okay. So D O G dot. Now let's run this. And you can see it has been replaced. So like this they are and if you need to go through the definitions of anything, you can go just by using if you are going with the strings, write their uh, data type that is your str and give a dot because that comes inside that functions right so functions are inside those uh, data types so str of like you need to go through the replace methods 
you write the replace sorry this is the wrong spelling and yeah so replace will be giving the definitions so the replace of count what it gives you count maximum number of occurrence from replace minus one so it replace all the occurrences right if you don't give anything last number last one would be replaced okay that's it so these are the things in these strings a uh, lot of questions are there for you to practice it okay uh, let's come to the list <coughs> now these lists are the heterogeneous data types which can have the lot of different kind of uh, numbers <coughs> the tuples basically what i say as a heterogeneous right different numerous data types could be entered or could be handled or could be stored in a list you can see okay oh someone is asking just a minute let me see some message over there slicing in the list ah oh, sorry strings hmm. okay Fine. Slicings are again the same thing. See, uh, let me come here. <coughs> For the slicing, see, like if I'm having a word, let's take a big word, ah. elephant. So this is a big word, elephant, right? Now, I'm going to do slicing. So you have to enter the way, right? So like if I write this as minus, so what it means, the last one should be removed, right? From starting to the last one. Minus one, what it means? You know, the ranges we have talked about in the for. Like if I if I write something uh, for i in a range of uh, like twelve to thirty or twelve to fifty. Yes, sir. Just a minute. Yeah, so for i in range of 12 to 15, right? And if you print the i, so the values would be from 12, 13, and 14. That is how the last one works in the range. In the elephant 2, the last one what I am giving you here is minus 1. Okay, <coughs> so minus 1 stands for the last element. So before the colon, what you see in the very first one is nothing, that is blank area, this one. Okay, so this is from the starting that means from the start it will go on iterating you can say basically not iterations are there printing are being done okay so from here it starts and till where it has to go i am giving the stopping limit minus one this one right so it will not go till here <laughs> if i am given the start stopping limit till minus one so it will go till n so that is what you have to see now you can make it as a reverse one by doing this, reversing the complete list. Now this method can be used for reversing the list, reversing the uh, tuples, reversing the uh, you can say strings and like further I will be giving you some basic knowledge of numpy also. So numpy arrays and all could be reversed using this. Basically, it, it means like from the starting to the stopping, right, from the starting limit, I understand what it means. From the starting to the stopping limit, you have to go with the intervals of negative. That is, you have to go backward counting, minus one. Clear to everyone, anyone having doubts in this? Yeah, in slicing and things, don't keep any doubts. like 
if you say in the intervals of 2, <coughs> so E, then L would be missing, then again E, then P, and then H, and then A, and then M. I think that's clear. If I say in the elements, oh, sorry, in the intervals of negative 2, it would be giving you first as T, and then missing of N, then A, and then H, then P, then E, then L. Clear to everyone? Any doubts? Clear. So I think I hope it's clear, right? So, okay. Go ahead. okay. So list also goes with the same things, right? You can go with definitions of the list. L I S T and class. So things are there. Okay, and all the definitions, right? Size of these are Okay, oh, these are not important. So, append, clear, copy, count, and all this. Okay, but the definitions are there. But, okay, uh, let me go directly removing this. So, printing your directory of your list. So, you have all these things <coughs> in your list from append. Clear, copy, count, extend, index, insert, pop, and list of small things, but <laughs> very important. Again, okay, plays very important roles in list of things. Okay. Now, as I said in the list, you can hold different kind of data types. So it is heterogeneous. Next important features: these are mutable. Mutable in the sense you can say that these can be the values here can be changed. Now changed can be meant as the values can be replaced. Ah, that is clear. Right. So, so let's say I have some list of numbers, even numbers. Okay. And I have a list of num even numbers from 1 to 40. Right. 0 to 40. I'm not going to write the numbers from 0 to 40. What I'll say is <coughs> the g is equals to for i in the range of from 0 to 40, print the numbers from 2. To go and print the numbers in the intervals of 2. So I get all the even numbers from 0 to 40, isn't it? Right. These are the list of numbers, but these are not in the kind of a list. <coughs> Type of i, integer, <coughs> because every single goes in the iterations of the integer, not in the case of a list. So these are the numbers. Okay, so I want to add these numbers in the list. They have a different methods for that, right? Before that, let me give you a basic knowledge how list looks like. So strings looks like this or something sometimes as this, sometimes as this, like this, okay? Now let's have a kind of this. Oh, in the string we have forgotten some methods of the splittings, but I think I have discussed split previous also. So let goes list goes here in the square brackets. Okay. Now, uh, like let's see the numbers are there even numbers, and I write some zero, two, four, six, eight, and ten. Like this, right? So these are numeric type. Now, there could be some uh, alpha numeric. These are pure numeric, alpha numeric would be like 0, 2, 4, 6, like 0, <coughs> only 1, or uh, basically 2, let's say, okay, alpha numeric it is there, <coughs> now, we can have the next type, with different data type. So, D types should be better. DD types. Yeah, that is better. Now, 
so uh, what I'll do is this is a list this is also a list and I would be adding some sets we will be learning it tomorrow what is set I would be adding some tuples yeah I would be adding some dictionaries this and I got a syntax error where mm, okay okay so uh, if you see the type of this num okay the type of el num list and even the type of gt type this is also a list okay now so i'll be going with all the things right so for i uh, let me copy this would be better <coughs> uh, let me copy this statement better yeah so for i in num Paste. So all the numbers and the classes, integer. For i n a l num. So some integers, some strings, different data types. So this, yeah. Okay. So for i n DD type. Now you have the first kind as list, second one as list, third one as set, another one as tuple, and then the next one as dictionary. Okay, right. So, like this, you can go, <coughs> you can go with the second loops too, like for i in the DD type. And then again for j in the dd type of one, like <coughs> if I say your dd type of indexing, like of first one, what is your first one? This is your first one. So you can go with for i in dd type of again in the list, like for uh, j in your dd type of your zero or for your i. Oh, print your J and the type of J. We'll be giving you some indices, yeah. Not in the list, yeah. So that will be a problem. Okay. Just uh, That's fine. So, okay. Uh, there are list okay <coughs> list and this is between the zero slices not list. Hmm. These are given the resources. So. The first thing what we did like adding some even numbers a lot of even numbers were there from 0 to 40 so in a list of numbers like in the num i'm having this 
if I want to add 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, some numbers like, okay, I want to add what I'll do is num dot append. Append goes with the additions and in the last, okay, so it always adds thing to the last of your list, the last element. First element is this, last element is this, right? If I say I need to add 12. And the 12 has been added at the last of the list and you can see the things over there okay like that now so if this is one of the thing right and I want to add 14 16 all of them what I'll do is the next we have called as extent <clears throat> so when you want to add multiple elements in a list you use extent and you add it like 14 16 uh, your 18, 20, whatever you want. Okay. But when you do this additions using the append, it would create a problem. <coughs> right. So that would be a error, basically, what you will be getting. All right. So these are the methods. So what you can do is <coughs> we can apply a loop where we can say uh, that these are the even numbers, that is E, F. TV and o. TV and o. okay, and this could be a blank list. Now we could take for i n a very quick and easy program, like in the intervals of two. Oh, uh, let me take up to two hundred. So I'm getting it from zero to two hundred. So with this, what I'll do is. <coughs> EVNO dot append the values of i basically once the loop starts what it does all the numbers once a number comes right it will be appended to where in the EVNO uh, even numbers one number second number third number fourth number and like this this blank list is going to be filled with the even numbers right so I'll be running this and it's done if I see my E V N O I look some numbers from 0 to 2, not some, the even numbers. The clear. Very easy. So you can take prime numbers, you can take uh, the odd numbers, you can take even numbers, you can take negative numbers, positive numbers, you can differentiate between them using this methods. Like list could be important in very ways. Now, out of these numbers, right, if you want to separate some kinds in some different algorithms, if you apply, if you want to separate them, you can separate it, right, okay. <clears throat> like you have given the uh, events, you can have odds, okay, and same with the negative positive numbers, you can apply ranges, you can apply random numbers, and you can get the things over there, okay. So these are the things in the list. The very first appendices. Okay, extra and append have been done. Now, if you need to count, <coughs> in the last day, uh, I think I have shown you some random dot choice. Have I? Let me check it. Choice. I think uh, we had this script. Someone was having choice. Yeah, I, I had. So choice basically gives you your selected random things and you can write it accordingly, right? So there you can go with the things too. Now in the list, what different methods are there? Let me see. Okay, append is the clear copy count extent index. Let's go with them. <coughs> now let's say I have a list of companies offering internships to some college. So let's say company's name C O M P or C O would be better, short name. And I say it has to be Google. I say IBM, I say HP, I say HCL. Okay. So these are the companies which were giving internships till now. 
Now, so once in a year, let's say these companies have given the internships the next year, right? So this was CEO. Next year, let's say the com next companies comes. So this year, IBM came, HP came, Google came, HCL did not came, right? So in that case, we had any good company name give you Microsoft right so we have two years data right okay now so with the two years data we'll be making a combined company which would be CO plus CO1 so COMP looks something like this now here we'll be looking like in the following two years how many times HP has given the internships. So basically doing so MP dot HP. Sorry. Count function two times. Right. So you can go with the count. How count function works? Behind the count functions, what other procedures? Comparisons basically <coughs> loops and comparisons we will make you understand later on, right? Okay, now if suddenly a company comes right in the second year, combined year, and says that it would be giving you internships in regular basis for all the coming years, what will you be? You will be giving priority to the company, right? So yeah, companies would be in some of the formats. Just a minute. <coughs> so that is your CMP dot sort. Like this. So let's say TCS comes, okay, and would be giving you internships on a regular basis. So what I would do, would be adding it like in the extent and in the append. In the both things, you have seen that the elements are getting added in the last. So if you need to add them in the first, in the beginnings, right? So what we do is we need to use the other function that is called as insert. Right? So we are doing comp dot insert so where we need to insert in the first place because that will be giving you internships on a regular basis so insert zero and what do you need to insert tcs so this is your company's final data looks like the so tcs <coughs> google for two times then hcl then hp then ibm and then microsoft okay like that okay <coughs> Right now, if I have a number list and I need to clear this, if I need to copy this, I'll say num1 equals to num dot copy, and with my num1 would be same as the number. If I need to clear it, I'll say num dot clear, and this will be an empty list. So if it is an empty list, I did not to go with the thing, so I would be doing delete this num, and it would be done. So now this time if I run this, I'll be getting an error. That is a name error. It is not defined, obviously. Right. Even num dot size of it is not defined. Num one dot size of 128 bytes. <coughs> All the numbers are there. Right? Okay. Next. So till here, I hope things are clear, right? So what next functions we have left on? <coughs> Pop, remove, <coughs> reverse, sortings. And that's it, I hope, yeah. Pop, remove, reverse, and sort, all right. See, in the ALNUM, alphanumeric, you have some of the elements. If I want to remove six, I'll say ALNUM dot, remove 6 
So A and N U M would not having would not be having six there anymore. If I want to remove zero, again I have a method A L M dot P O P zero A L N U M zero has been outdated. Now, what exactly removed us? It basically removes an element from your list. Whatever you write, what pop does? It also removes your element if you write something inside the parenthesis. But if you don't write, what happens? It will automatically remove the last element. That is, the two would be removed from the right hand side. T W O, that one. Okay. Now, you see. This, the T W O has been removed. Okay. That is it. If you need to reverse it, you will say a l n u m dot reverse 0, 4, 2. Otherwise, you can do a l n u m again the starting stopping in the intervals of negative 2, 4, 0. <coughs> That's it. Right. So, these are the things in the list. I hope things are clear to you. Questions are there for you to practice over there. And if you doubts, if you have doubts, you can ask over there in the things right i'll be sharing you some of the <coughs> google classroom links okay because i was having some troubles with my phone and the laptop both of things just a minute